Brace yourself. It's Super Game Boy from Nintendo! Play your Game Boy games on the Super NES in living color! Even choose your own color combinations. Play all 350 Game Boy games. How does that strike you? Super Game Boy for the Super NES! Game Boy games in color, intense! You know, I can remember when the Super Game Boy came out. This was every kid's dream back in the early mid-90s. Playing your favorite Game Boy games not only on your television, but in color. It was pretty remarkable. But did you know that all Super Game Boys were deeply flawed and ran faster than their portable counterparts despite the hardware being the same? Well, it's true. It was so bad that even speedrunning communities to this day forbid the use of these devices in competition. Now, how much faster is the Super Game Boy than the portables? Well, close to the neighborhood of 3% faster, which is quite huge. Now, check out this comparison footage that I captured of Rockman 5. Notice how much audio is affected, and notice how much faster that it runs. Now this totally ruins the experience, and I could even feel this back when I was a little mini Lord Voltar. Now the technical reason for this is because the Super Game Boy hardware is actually using the Super Nintendo's clock to clock in all of the Game Boy hardware, which in itself runs approximately 4.5% faster than the actual correct speed. Now Nintendo realized that this was a problem and corrected this on the Super Game Boy 2, which unfortunately was only released in Japan. Nintendo actually had a special crystal made specifically for the hardware so that the Game Boy hardware ran at the appropriate speed. But fortunately, members of our community have resolved this issue for all Super Game Boys. Cordimoto, a former thespian and reformed priest, has designed the Super Game Boy Clock Mod, a circuit that properly clocks the Super Game Boy to have a frequency that matches its portable counterparts. Now what a great, fantastic kit that is most suitable for the novice modder. Stick with me and I'll get you through this one. Now we've got our clock mod PCB right here and before us we have two different versions of the Super Game Boy hardware. Now on this side this is the American Super Game Boy and on this side, we have the Japanese Super Famicom Super Game Boy. Now, I've went ahead and unzipped all of the screws out, but let's just take these plates off and see what's underneath. Now, I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but these versions are virtually identical. As a matter of fact, they are identical. Both have the same PCB revision these puppies are identically the same. There is no difference between installing the clock mod in the Japanese version or in the American version. So this guide is applicable to both. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's get the install going. Now I have decided to install the clock mod in the American version of the Super Game Boy. So we're just going to take the PCB out. We're going to discard this shell. Now we're going to flip this over because all of the solder and mod work is going to happen on this side. Let's zoom in carefully. Now don't worry my little champions, we are going to make the Super Game Boy speed run worthy in just a matter of minutes. Now according to the instructions, we only need to remove three components and then we will be superimposing our board into approximate position in this location. So let's zoom in just a little bit tighter and let's remove the necessary components so we can install this PCB. Now right here in the bottom right hand corner of the board, we need to remove C15 and R7. I want to zoom in a little bit tighter and we're just going to use our soldering iron with generous amounts of solder and we're going to float these two components off. Let's get to it. 
Now I'm going to come in on the right side of this capacitor and I'm just going to feed a generous amount of solder simultaneously to both sides of this cap and just watch this very, very carefully and quickly. We might even grab both that cap and that resistor just like that. Easy enough guys and there's just one component remaining right here. R1 located directly above this ASIC. We need to float this off of the board. Let's make short work of it. Now just like before we're just going to advance our tip right in here to the side with our solder on the other side of the resistor and we're just going to advance this in and we're going to float fresh solder to both sides of this resistor right off. Now we're all set to install our board. Now the instructions do say that for R1 you should clean these pads. However, I am a champion and I don't need to do that in order to get this board to seat properly and thoroughly well into position. So let's just zoom in and let's just install this board and we'll be all done. Now before putting any solder on the board, let's just take our PCB, put it in position and line it up just like this. And it's that simple and it's that fast. Great job. What a fantastic modification for the newbie. Excellent soldering here. Great work. Now the Super Game Boy is going to be worthwhile for speed runners. Our sound is not going to be too high pitched and everything is going to run correctly just like the portable systems. Pat yourselves on the back and give Cordy Moto a hand. He did a fantastic job with this kit. Great job. Now whether you're installing this in a Super Game Boy from the West or a Japanese Super Game Boy, it doesn't matter. The process is the same. Well guys, what a fantastic, fantastic mod for the novice modder who doesn't have a great deal of soldering experience. This might just be the project that gets your feet wet and this might just be the project that gets you hooked into one of the greatest hobbies that there is currently in the retro gaming scene. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and hitting that notification bell so that you'll know when I update. I intend to update far more frequently because there's a lot of things that I need to show you guys. And also, I have an auxiliary YouTube channel where you'll find very precise and very specific soldering, modding, and electronic tutorials that you'll never see here. Check it out. There's a link in the description to that channel. Be sure you sub there too. And also, if you need to buy any mod kits, or if you need my services, go to my website, www.voltar.com. Well guys, until we meet again, leave some comments down below of what you might like to see in the future. Take care of yourselves and each other. Retro RGB resources. Retro RGB, allegedly. Retro RGB allegedly Retro RGB Retro RGB allegedly has relations with